alpha. What's up, Sony Alpha Universe, and welcome back to another episode of my four-part vlogging series. My name is Mike Eloff, and in today's session, we're gonna be covering how to make money from blogs. We've already covered the basics. We've covered on how to film and edit. Now it's time to learn how to make some cash. Without further ado, let's get going. Right, before we get going, let me do a quick run through on what we're gonna be covering in today's session. We're gonna be covering how I have personally made money from blogging in the past. Then we're also gonna be covering how you guys can make some money and the different ways of making money from blogging itself. Then we'll be talking about the importance of only ever uploading good quality content because especially if you're working with brands you don't ever want to put something that's out there that's not good quality content and then how you guys can structure how much you actually charge when working with brands then finally we'll be talking about why you should always use royalty free music or have a registered website where you get your music from so that when you're uploading to youtube you never have any issues with them taking your video down or giving the royalties to somebody else Right, with that said, let's get into today's session. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is how I've personally made money through vlogging and working with brands by creating vlogs and creating content for properties, tourism boards, and things like that. I'll give you guys two different examples. In the first example, we worked with SA Airlink as well as different international properties in Mozambique. We were asked by Airlink to go and explore different routes that they've got, create different vlogs for each one of the trips that we're going on, and then really pump out the actual route from getting there to Mozambique and then all of the things that you can do and places that you can stay. Those were really, really cool campaigns and the way that we had structured them was before IGTV had even come about. So it was creating vertical video that we had put up onto the SA Airlink Instagram stories. And we created this entire story through a blog to each of the actual trips that we did all by doing daily blogs. They were really, really cool because we got to go and explore some brand new parts of Mozambique that we'd never been to before. Uh, and we also got to go and do a whole bunch of different activities like riding horses, going on epic chopper rides. It was just fantastic. So we created this vlogging series. It was a great campaign and it was a huge success. And on top of that, we were also creating content which was used in magazines and all sorts of that stuff. But that is something we'll cover in another session altogether. Then the second one that I'd like to talk to you guys about is a campaign that we did for a local hotel here based in Cape Town, the Renaissance Blue. It was super fun. We got to go out there. We got to go stay for a couple of days, creating content, vlogging, and just basically showing off the actual property itself based on an actual brief that they gave us. So these are obviously paid campaigns and we made some cash by working with brands. It was super fun working with these brands and because of the cool stuff that we do both internationally, travel and that sort of art, by either working with tourism boards or working with brands like hotels. Right, so those are two ways that I've personally made money through blogging. But let me tell you about another two ways that you could maybe make some money through not just vlogging, by actual video content itself. So one other way that you can make money is by uploading your content onto YouTube. If you didn't already know, you can make money through the ads that pop up onto YouTube. Uh, if somebody clicks on that and you've got all the royalties and all the music and everything on that actual video, you can make some great income. And the longer your video is up there, which is basically for life, you will start earning passive income on that. So the more people are watching it, the more you're getting income and the more videos you have on your YouTube account, the more money you'll make in the future. Just remember that when you're uploading to YouTube and you wanna make money, that you have to have at least a thousand subscribers in order to activate that feature on YouTube itself. Then another really cool way that you can make money is by uploading content like your B-roll and things like that up onto stock websites like Shutterstock or Artlist. So those are great ways that you can just upload the content and also let it sit there and that is also awesome passive income. Then the next thing I wanna cover and I think this is really important, especially if you're working with brands, is the importance of good quality content and never ever uploading anything that you don't feel comfortable or don't feel really good about. You should always feel that this is my best possible content and this is the only stuff that I'm gonna upload. It just makes you look really good in the eyes of the brand and then also other possible brands that are watching these videos because believe it or not, other brands are watching stuff that you put out on the internet. It might not have anything to do with them, but they'll definitely see an opportunity of working with you if you're putting out awesome content. One way that I ensure that my content is always high quality is by using the Epic gear that I get to use from Sony. So I use a Sony A7R4, an A6400, especially when I'm unplugging. I mean, you guys have seen how awesome the content is that comes out of that, and then some other stuff as well. So make sure that you're using good quality gear when you're filming your vlogs, especially if you're doing branded stuff when you're getting cash. Next up, 
is building relationships with brands. Now, this is actually one of my favorite things that I love to do. I love to network, I love to speak to brands, and I love to just basically not become super mates with them, but to get on really, really good terms with them because that way, you're definitely gonna be getting return work over and over and over again. I've worked with a lot of brands where I've got a lot of repeat work by doing cool content and giving them only the best stuff that I can possibly give them. So I can't stress the importance of building relationships with brands. Never go out there and badmouth a brand that you've worked with on the internet or go to Twitter and say, ah, oh, I didn't like working with this brand because other brands, like I've just said, will actually see that stuff. They're watching you as an influencer or as a content creator. You don't want to create a bad name for yourself online by nagging and con by complaining about brands and, and things that you shouldn't be doing online. Always make sure that you've got a positive image online, that you're portraying a good character, only good vibes, and I promise you, the work will just start flowing in. Right, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of working with brands because believe me, there are plenty of do's and there are way more don'ts, especially when you're working with brands and especially if you want to be portraying a professional image. And that brings me to my first point, which is always be professional. Don't ever go out there and film a vlog and be putting stuff into your vlog that shouldn't be in there, inappropriate content. What do I mean by that? So say for instance, I'm going abroad to places like Dubai or an Arab country. I'm not gonna go out there and promote content of me running around without a shirt on. I'm gonna be respectful of putting out content like that. Then one thing you should really do, and one thing that I always do, and it's called over-delivery. Under promise and over deliver. That way brands will look at you and they'll go, wow, he, he, under, he didn't really promise us this stuff, but he gave it to us anyway. And he's not asking us for any more cash, but he's doing it. That way you're building the relationship with the brand. And it's another great way of actually building relationships by under promising and over delivering. Then the next thing you should definitely not do is undervalue yourself. If you're going out there and you're filming an epic vlog and that means you're going into the mountains like me as an adventurer and you're creating epic content and you're spending an entire day up there and within that you're actually creating photo time lapses which means that you can come back home and it's going to take hours and hours and hours of like labor intensive stuff on your computer, on you as well. Don't undervalue yourself. Really just put it through to the client right at the beginning and then say to them, this is what my ideas, this is what my ideas are for the actual blog that I want to form for you. This is why I'm going to be charging XXX and then you negotiate with brands as well. So if they want to negotiate, definitely open up negotiations, but don't go below what you should actually be valuing yourself at. Then the next thing you definitely should not be doing, especially when working with brands, is working with competing brands within a close proximity. So if I'm working with SAA Link, I'm not going to go work with Mango in two days time. I'm just going to be working with SA Airlink and then I'll wait a long time before I do another campaign with an airline. Things like that. Then one thing you want to be doing when you're working with a brand and you're doing vlogs for them is work them into your vlogs in a very authentic way, in a nice subtle way. You don't want to be selling a product like crazy because people are going to pick up on it in your vlog. You want to be nice and natural and really just slip stuff in there nice and subtly so that brands are happy with the way that you're putting their name out there and then your consumers are also not really so aware that you're doing an actual campaign. Which actually does bring me to my next point and that is to be clear with your followers when you're working with brands and making sure that they understand that your content is sponsored. Which brings me to my next point, which is disclosing with your subscribers or with your viewers and whoever's consuming the content that you're putting out there, that this is sponsored content. Definitely let them know, either at the beginning of the video by just adding some text in at the bottom. Uh, in some countries you actually have to buy law, keep it in your actual video for the entire time saying that it's a sponsored content or it's an ad. Um, but for us here in South Africa, we don't have to do that. But I do like to let people know, either in the description of the video that I'm uploading onto Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, wherever it may be, that it is sponsored content. And just let them know maybe at the end of the video as well. Like say, this was a sponsored video and it was all thanks to the guys from XYZ. And that's why it's such a cool video. Thank you very much, guys. And if you like this, then definitely go check out these products. So there's different ways that you can add it in there and still be subtle about it. But definitely be upfront and be quite clear and transparent with your subscribers. Because if you're not, you'll probably wake up the next morning and you've lost quite a few subscribers. All right, so let's talk about one of the biggest questions that I've ever been asked, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it is. How do you contact brands? Now, <laughs> This is just one of those things that uh, it's trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. But let me give you some of the tips that I have for contacting brands because there's a very specific way that I contact brands and it seems to work every single time, at least now. First thing you want to do when contacting brands is only contact brands that work with you and your niche and that work into stuff that you're putting out onto your channels. So if you're doing travel and lifestyle and adventure and things like that, contact a travel, lifestyle and adventure company to work with. 
Then when you're contacting those brands, if you're sending them an email, always start with a hook. So, hi, my name is Mike Eloff. I'm a content creator based in beautiful Cape Town, South Africa. I have X amount of followers on Instagram and I've worked with some of these really, really cool brands. Maybe even brands that are similar to them. So say for instance, I'm contacting a vehicle brand. I'll say to them, well, here's some of the cool work that I've done with Ford South Africa and Land Rover. So if you guys are keen on working with me, this is the type of stuff that I do and I'd love to create content for you. Then have a media kit and a proposal ready to send to them if they're interested. Don't go straight out there and say, this is what I want to do with you. You really want to be careful about doing that with certain brands because unfortunately there are brands out there that have actually taken ideas from influencers in the past and made it their own and there's been no NDAs to go back on so there's no way that you can take any kind of legal action so always make sure that you get the brands interested in you first and then if you even want to do an NDA send it to them get them to sign it and then you can give them their super cool idea that's going to make them a lot of money and it's going to make you some good cash as well then don't be disheartened if you don't get a reply from a brand straight away it's happened to all of us I've sent a hundred emails and got a reply from one person before a hundred emails and one reply because sometimes brands just aren't interested. A lot of the time brands will either just not reply to you or they will get back to you if they're really, really good. And they'll say, sorry, we're not interested right now, but we'll keep you on record. Now, don't think that that is a diss and they'll never ever get in touch with you because I have worked with brands that I've emailed in the past and waited three, four months, maybe even six months to hear back from. And then I heard back from them and they were like, yeah, okay, cool. We're super keen to work with you now. We've got this great campaign. We've been watching what you're getting up to. Thanks for contacting us six months ago. It allowed us to really see who you are and now we think that you're the perfect fit for our brand. Just a tip, if you're struggling to find an email address for a brand, I've got this really cool way of always getting a reply from a brand. I don't know if you guys know that when it comes to Facebook, Facebook pages, they have a response time. And if you go to anybody's Facebook page and you go and have a look at the response time, normally it says 100% and super good, which means that the brands are always looking at their DMs and they're getting back to the people. So if you're not hearing back from an email address that you've got, or if you've contacted them as a DM on Instagram and you're not hearing back from them there, shoot them a message on Facebook Messenger because I promise you they'll see it and they'll have to get back to you. It might be a little bit sneaky, but that's a cool little tip on how you'll definitely get a response from a brand when you want to get in touch with them. I think the second biggest question that I get asked through DMs all the time is, Mike, how do you structure your rates when you're working with brands? And that's such a good question because I remember when I first started out, I had absolutely no clue what I should be charging brands. It's just one of those things you just don't know what to charge especially when you're starting out if you're still unsure as to what you should be charging one of the ways that i personally found out how i should be charging brands or what i should be charging brands was by joining up with a whole bunch of different influencer networks now there's a whole bunch of influencer networks out there so go and google influencer network in my area and you can go and join up and when you sign up with them you add in your social handles it does a calculation in the back end through its own little algorithm and it spits out a figure as to what it thinks you should be charging for a facebook post for an Instagram, for an Instagram story and things like that. So go join up with not just one influencer network, go pick a few and go check and see what their algorithms are saying and what you should be charging per post and give a figure from that. So it's an easy way of figuring out what you should be charging, but do take into account that if you're gonna be filming a vlog and you're gonna be doing extra things like driving far to go and film it or doing a time lapse, things like that, that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of hours out of your actual day then maybe just adjust your rates accordingly based off of that. Because you don't want to be undercharging for stuff that you're gonna be spending hours and hours and hours editing. Remember, time is money. So you don't want to be doing stuff for free if you're gonna be doing way more than what you've originally bargained for. All right, something that's very important when it comes to making money through YouTube, when vlogging or uploading any kind of video onto YouTube actually, is making sure that when you upload your video, that you're using royalty-free music and nothing that is going to be picked up by YouTube and it's going to affect the way that you get paid your royalties from people actually watching your videos. So say for instance you edit this really epic vlog, it's an adventure, but you've added in something like Martin Garrix or something like that, one of his tunes into your vlog, YouTube is going to pick up on that song straight away and they're going to give all of the royalties from all of the little banners that pop up all through to Martin Garrix. Why? Because it's his song. He didn't give it to people as royalty-free music. So if you want to find royalty-free music, watch my previous episode where we we're actually talking about editing and I'll talk about the different areas where you can get royalty-free music. But if you're not using royalty-free music in your videos, then don't expect to get any kind of income through YouTube because they just won't give it to you. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it. Those are the core fundamentals in my own personal opinion on how you can go out there 
and make money through blogging. So all that's left is for you to go out there, contact brands, get awesome campaigns and start making money through epic video content, especially through blogging. All right, with that said, guys, let's do a quick recap on what you would have learned in today's session. So we covered how I personally have made money through blogging, through two different campaigns. Then I also told you about two different other ways that you can make money through blogging and actually uploading your content that you've made while filming blogs onto places like stock websites, as well as through how you can actually make money on YouTube itself through ad revenue. Then we spoke about the importance of why you should always only ever upload good quality content. Remember guys, good quality content will get you more jobs from other brands because other brands are always watching your stuff. Then we spoke about the do's and don'ts of working with brands. Remember, always under promise and over deliver and then never badmouth brands and always have a positive, awesome image of yourself on your social platforms. Remember, disclose that information with your consumers. You don't want to be going out there and doing a whole bunch of promoted content. People know that it's promoted content and you haven't actually said that it's promoted content. It's just up to you to let people know that it has been sponsored and you need to say a big thank you to the brands as well because it's sponsored content and they are helping you basically live your life by paying you a salary. <laughs> salary. <laughs> then we covered how to actually contact brands and some cool little neat tricks that I gave you guys and I hope you use those tips to actually get in touch with brands. Because remember, not every single brand will get back to you. But if you use that cool little Facebook trick that I gave you guys, <laughs> nine out of 10 times, you're gonna hear back from that brand. Then we spoke about how much money you should be charging brands. Don't undercharge brands for stuff that you're gonna be doing a lot of work for. Always make sure that you take all the things into account as to what you're gonna be doing and explain to brands, this is why I'm charging you X amount because there's travel costs, because there's time lapses and things like that. Then the last thing we covered was the importance of using royalty-free music because if you're going to be uploading your content to YouTube, you don't want to have it blocked by YouTube because your music is not royalty-free. Right, with all of that out the way, I would love to help you guys get your blogging career off to an epic start. So if you'd like to buy some of the epic Sony gear that I get to use on a daily basis, then here is a promo code for you to use right here and that entitles you to 10% cashback off your next Sony purchases at selected retail stores all around South Africa. Then a quick reminder to also go check out the Sony Alpha Universe because there's not just awesome webinar series over there from me, but from all of the Sony Alpha ambassadors from South Africa, as well as the Middle East. And there are some incredible content creators out there, so definitely go check them out. Also, make sure that you follow Sony Alpha SA on Instagram as well as Facebook so that you don't ever miss out on when the next webinars are gonna be going live, as well as awesome Instagram lives, takeovers, and things like that that are always happening on the social accounts. And that's it for me for today, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed today's session as well as the previous three that we've done in this epic vlogging webinar series where I taught you guys the basics, how to film, how to edit, and now how to make cash. Until next time, I hope you guys go out there and make your fortunes through vlogging. You, Ciao, ciao.